in the computer industry, we have heard a, a term that has become very popular, but we've all had a difficult time in my industry trying to explain what it is, and it's called multimedia. And it's probably because it's too high a level of abstraction. It doesn't give enough of a clue as to what it really does. What we usually mean by multimedia is we mean bringing together text and graphics and sound and animation and even full motion video so that we can use those medias together uh, and be able to do wonderful things with them. Presentations, for example, uh, can be much more alive than, than they could if you're only using text or even if you're using uh, only text and, and graphics. But I think that's a term that is probably too technology focused to maybe stick long term. Uh, my uh, best expression for it so far, and maybe we'll I'll come up with a better one as time goes on, is really interactive media. Because I think it tells you a little bit more about what you do with it. And it's how you use the media that I think is going to make the real difference, not just the, the fact that you have these uh, different media choices available to us in the technology in the 1990s. So it's how the media is integrated together uh, so that it becomes dynamic in the hands of the user. And that means the user is in control of the experience. And the big thing to keep in mind during the 1990s is that while many of these medias are dependent upon important hardware technologies, that the integration of these medias, the things that make it dynamic, the things that bring it together, are really software driven. So I think that some of the most interesting things that are going to be happening uh, from the technology world are going to be what happens with software in terms of how we integrate this media together and how we make it truly interactive, not just multimedia, but how we make it interactive for the individual. What I'd like to do is to show you uh, a few demonstrations this afternoon. And we have a series of film segments. And I'll take one just to show you. Uh, this happens to be uh, one of Apple's better known commercials. And I won't play the whole thing. <laughs> Unless you want me to. <laughs> computer will introduce Macintosh and you'll see why 1984 won't be like 1984. But I think what this demonstrates is that you can bring together these two technologies. There's you know, an image that's made for, for television but we can now display it uh, digitally on a personal computer a screen, the same screen where we can show you know, text and graphics. Uh, and so the question now becomes, if we can do those kinds of capabilities, can we make it more than just a series of technologies? Can we really do something useful with it? And what I'd like to show you is some examples that have been developed by uh, ABC News. ABC News has put together uh, some examples of how uh, they can take the valuable libraries of video that they have developed over the, the years and begin to build a whole new business concept on the idea that you can get this information on demand as you want it. In other words, not as they present it on the evening news, but as you would like to see it. Now, in today's technology, uh, that means storing it on some media, maybe an optical disc, for example. Uh, or it could be on videotape. In the future, uh, what it's going to mean is that you'll be able to get it on demand as fiber optic comes into your home, uh, and you'll be able to see television quality images, which you can call up 
uh, any w way that you choose. So the kind of television that you can look forward to, probably before this decade is over, is going to be dramatically different than anything you see today on cable or on broadcast. Or as Nicholas Negroponte you know, likes, to, likes to say, everything uh, that goes through the air, meaning largely broadcast television, is probably going to go through the ground. And everything that goes through the ground, which is primarily our, our, our telephone service through, through the wire, uh, is moving through the air through cellular. So we're going through these, these major shifts, and they'll probably happen in a, in a reasonably short period of time. One of the consequences is uh, that we will be able to uh, actually uh, have interactive media in our homes. And I'll reach in, and we can look at something like the freeing of Nelson Mandela. This is a very recent news story, probably uh, fresh in our minds for most of us. And let me just uh, show you how I can play a brief segment of that. We'll go in and we can take either the news report that ABC News uh, delivered on it, or we could take the South African TV uh, version of it. Let's take the South African TV coverage. There's Mr. Mandela, Mr. Nelson Mandela, a free man taking his first steps into a new South Africa. What did Mandela say in his, his first speech? I could go down to a, another segment, and I could pull that excerpt out and listen to his first words after he was freed from prison. I quote, I have fought against white domination. And I have fought against black domination. I have cherished the idea of a democratic and free society in which all passions live together in harmony and, and with equal opportunities. It is an ideal which I hope to live for and to achieve. But if needs be, it is an ideal for which I am prepared to die. So how do you take a young student in school today and give them a context so they can see what was going on in the world at the time, in this case, when Nelson Mandela went to prison? Well, we can reach back into the archives of what uh, ABC News uh, has for their uh, video library, and we can go back in and look at Martin Luther King, same year that Nelson Mandela went to prison. And when he was arrested in this country, in Birmingham, Alabama, and see what you know, he was saying at that time. When you are humiliated day in and day out by nagging signs reading white and colored, and your first name becomes nigger, and you are forever fighting a degrading and degenerating sense of nobodiness, then you will understand why we find it difficult to wait. Interactive media suddenly becomes an incredibly powerful tool uh, for learning because it allows you to present information which is, was created for another purpose and then to recycle that information uh, in you know, a, a much uh, more interactive way than it was ever uh, intended to at the time that it was, was uh, filmed or videotaped. So that's one of the powerful ideas that I think is going to uh, really take hold during the 1990s. What Alan and I did were to go around and visit laboratories, to talk a lot, read books, uh, talk with other people, and try to identify what were some of the really interesting technologies that were incubating at that time in the laboratories, either at Apple or in other companies or universities or other places in the world, that were likely to become you know, part of the source of these great products that we would see out in the future. And it was Alan's contention that it takes about 15 years for this incubation to take place, regardless of whether something is very difficult to do or whether something is relatively simple to do. And so out of that uh, came 
uh, a product which I described back in 1987 as the Knowledge Navigator. And uh, not only did uh, I write about it at that time, uh, but we put together a video to try to dramatize what the Knowledge Navigator might look like. messages. Your graduate research team in Guatemala, just checking in. Robert Jordan, a second semester junior, requesting a second extension on his term paper. And your mother reminding you about your father's surprise birthday party next Sunday. Today you have a faculty lunch at 12 o'clock. You need to take Kathy to the airport by 2. You have a lecture at 415 on deforestation in the Amazon rainforest. Right. Let me see the lecture notes from last semester. No, that's not enough. I need to review more recent literature. Pull up all the new articles I haven't read yet. Journal articles only? Mm hmm fine. Your friend Jill Gilbert has published an article about deforestation in the Amazon and its effects on rainfall in the Sub-Sahara. It also covers drought's effect on food production in Africa and increasing imports of food. Contact Jill. I'm sorry, she's not available right now. I left a message that you had called. Okay, let's see. There's an article about five years ago, Dr. Flemson or something. He really disagreed with the direction of Jill's research. John Fleming of Uppsala University. He published in the Journal of Earth Science of July 20 of 2006. Yes, that's it. He was challenging Jill's projection of the amount of carbon dioxide being released to the atmosphere through deforestation. I'd like to recheck his figures. Here is the rate of deforestation he predicted. Mm-hmm. And what happened? Hmm. He was really off. Give me the university research network. Show only universities with geography nodes. Show Brazil. Copy the last 30 years at this location at one month intervals. Excuse me, Jill Gilbert is calling back. Great, put her through. Hi Mike, what's up? Jill, thanks for getting back to me. Well, I guess that new grant of yours hasn't dampened your literary abilities. Rumor has it that you've just put out the definitive article on deforestation. Aha. Uh -huh. Is this one of your typical last-minute panics for lecture material? No, 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 no. That's not until, um... 4.15. <sighs> well, it's about the effects that reducing the size of the Amazon rainforest can have outside of Brazil. I was wondering, um... It's not really necessary, but, uh... Mm, yes? Uh, it would be great if you were available to make a few comments. Nothing formal. After my talk, you would come up on the big screen, discuss your article, and then answer some questions from the class. And bail you out again? Well, I think I could squeeze that in. You know, I have a simulation that shows the spread of the Sahara over the last 20 years. Here, let me show you. Nice. Very nice. I've got some maps of the Amazon area during the same time. Let's put these together. Great. I'd like to have a copy of that for myself. Hmm. What happens if we bring down the logging rate to 100,000 acres per year? Interesting. I can definitely use this. Thanks for your time, Jill. I really appreciate it. No problem. But next time I'm in Berkeley, you're buying the dinner. 
Dinner, right. See ya, 4.15. Bye-bye. While you were busy, your mother called again to remind you to pick up the birthday cake. Mm, fine, fine, fine. Um, print this article before I go. Now printing. Okay, I'm going to lunch now. If Kathy calls, tell her I'll be there at 2 o'clock. Also, find out if I can set up a meeting tomorrow morning with, um, Tom Lee. Enjoy your lunch. Hello, Professor Bradford is away at the moment. Would you like to leave a message? Michael, this is your mother. I know that you're there. I'm just calling to remind you to call your sister and pick up. One of the important uh, technologies that was involved there was animation. Remember, this is simulation that you've been looking at, not on computers necessarily, but, but using uh, film techniques. But let's look at what you can actually do you know, with computer technology now. An example I'd like to show you is one which we call Frank the Snake. And this is uh, a little character that was uh, created uh, so that it's dynamically animated. This was not done, by the way, on a Macintosh computer. It was done on a Silicon Graphics uh, Iris uh, computer system. Uh, but we've been in the process of porting that to technology once we proved it could be done on a more powerful uh, platform. Uh, knowing that personal computers are going to get more, more powerful, we've been porting that technology then over to personal computers. are kind of the, the things that are, that are out there. And so when we look back at the computer industry today, or if we look at the telecommunications industry, or if we look at the entertainment industry, and we look at what's going on, we have to look at this convergence in terms of the context of what is going to be possible, because the technologies are moving very, very rapidly. There's something very, very important going on in the world. You know, it's bigger than computers. And it's probably bigger than any of the industries that, that, that you're all in. And if we can get the context right, uh, the technologies are going to happen. And I think uh, the opportunity uh, to be even a part of it is going to be one of the most marvelous journeys that any of us could want to be on. Thank you very much. <laughs>